Okay, my lovely friends, it is uh, time for you and me to sum this whole thing up. How about we start off with this? It's a con job on an epic scale. We have to talk about a few things going on. So yes, post-market wrap-up on this Tuesday, September 27, 2022. Let's start off with the con job that we heard this morning. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> so here's a piece of economic news, which... Uh, it's just, it's so far-fetched that it's just out of control. So apparently they're trying to fist feed you and I that consumer confidence just miraculously hit a five-month high. Uh, how about this is absolutely false? I don't know a single person, not one, and I, I, I can't imagine it's you, any of you out here, that are just so confident that inflation is going to finally slow down here, that things are just going to get miraculously better. It's not going to happen again, but it's more the same. It's the propaganda, the deceptive tactics, the nonsense, you know, talking about deceptive tactics. So we, what happened? They floated out Charles Evans earlier uh, to try to talk the market up, uh, saying, oh, 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 we're going to avoid a recession. We're going to avoid it. Stock started out in the green across the board. Triple digit gain for the Dow. Everyone was gleeful, orgasmic. The commentators on the on the mainstream uh, channels there, CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox, uh, 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 they were spraying their shorts everywhere. And then all of a sudden, things go south. We erase everything. We go deeply negative. They're like, what's going on? What is happening? Are they not paying attention to the 10-year yield, which is just about 4%? This debt market sell-off, people, is not abating. Uh, the dollar reversed from being lower to higher. The market hated it. The Dow finished in the negative by triple digits. S&P 500 net negative. The NASDAQ managed to put on a gain today. Look, uh, you know this better than anybody. You've been following this blog here? This this is just bad. I don't know another way to put it here. Look, if this continues, the sell-off here in, in the debt market, it's just over, it's done, it's finished. And we're not just talking about the stinking stock market here, people. We're talking about a completely new set of rules that I've been telling you is coming for I don't know how long here, Okay. They're moving chess pieces around on the board here, uh, and things things are going to get so bad so fast if this really gets going. And you know this. Look, the debt market is sincerely sending us a big, fat, ugly sign that things are big, fat, and freaking ugly here. If this meltdown, this is what we got here. This is a meltdown in the debt market that's just getting started. We haven't even seen anything yet, people, because I'm telling you, I already explained to you, we discussed it right here, this maybe last week. We are going to see 20, 30, and 40 basis point jumps higher in the 10-year yield on a in a day, okay, 20 already happened. This happened several times, okay. 30, 40, let me explain this to you. When that happens, you're going to see those commentators on the mainstream. They're not going to know what to do with themselves here. Uh, they're going to just be looking at each other dumbfounded trying to figure out what's going on. And you and I know what's going on. We have an unstable debt market that is getting more unstable. And central banks don't seem to really be doing too much about it. Unless they are behind the scenes and they're controlling this as some kind of a controlled demolition. Because if this were really to let go, and I'm talking about like boom, and you're seeing 20 and 30 basis points higher jumps on a daily basis with regard to the 10-year yield, global bond yields ballooning, debt selling off, the stock markets of the world are going to crater crater beyond anybody's wildest dreams. I already, I already told you what's going to happen. 80 or an 85% sell-off from the high of the S&P 500. We're down about 24% right now with regard to the S&P 500. Could you imagine an 80, 85%? Look, nobody knows where the bottom is. Nobody knows where the bottom is. Why is that? Because if you recall, 
Okay, the last big meltdown, the 2008 meltdown. I, I Dow six freaking thousand, six thousand. That's when the Fed jumped in here and said, oh, no, no, we got to stop the bleeding. That was QE1. They went on to QE2. They went on to Operation Twist. They've been buying debt ever since that time, people. The bottom for the Dow could be 2,000. We don't know. It's where no man and no freaking woman has ever gone before. But we're going to get there. Let me tell you something, because the, the biggest threat to human life on this planet, you know what I'm going to tell you because I've been telling you for days, is the hyper bubble in debt. This hyper bubble in debt is it. It's a clear and present danger. And when this thing really gets going, forget about the outcry in the streets here, the the uh, the disappearance or the uh, people are not go going to be able to attain basic resources to live and it's just going to be biblical, biblical here. Trust me on this one. It should be clear to you how this is going to unfold. Okay, forget about supply chain disruptions and this, that, and the other thing, which we saw during COVID, okay? This would make COVID look like a walk through Central Park, eating a vanilla ice cream cone, and just loving life. Uh, but this is not going to happen, people. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, and I think you do. Now, anyway, so like I said, this is a con job. Consumer confidence, consumer confidence. Notice the word confidence, okay? It's a con job that they're trying to tell you that, oh, yeah, people, they're just so happy right now. Oh, oh, they don't know what to do with themselves. Can't, you can't make it up. I'll tell you something else that you can't make up here. So the Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor himself, you know who this is? The real Lex Luthor is Neil Kashkari, Fed President Neil Kashkari of the Federal Freaking Freak Show Reserve here. Now, this is what he said. The Fed needs to continue raising rates because inflation is so bad. Oh, how about maybe, sir, Lex Luthor, okay? Uh, how about we talk about the real root cause of inflation? And that is central banks destroying the purchasing power of their currency. Speaking of that, another... Uh, President Retard, okay, I don't care if you hate the word, uh, is now sending another $12 billion over to Ukraine. Okay, where are we getting this cash from? We don't have it. Billions and tens of billions of dollars to go fight a proxy war over there. Look, I'm all about helping people or whatever this may be over there. I don't even want to talk about it. But I think most of you have a handle on what's going on. But this is just another mechanism here to pull cash into the now. Wars, expanding wars, this policy, that policy, whatever it is, where no one ever talks about how we're going to pay for it anymore. It used to be like you put a program into effect, a bill, an act, whatever it might be. Now, how, how are you going to pay for it? Now it don't matter anymore because it's the mechanism. Pull cash from the future. Pull cash into the future. That's the only way to keep the debt-based economic model going, people. You know that. Without this mechanism, we implode. Like I told you earlier today. You want to end the Fed? You want to end the Fed. Prevent them from issuing one single dollar of debt. Just one. It implodes. That's why this president, the last president, the president before him, have all done the same kind of thing. What can we do to allow the Federal Reserve to continue to inflate, to continue to devalue the currency? Some presidents, like our last guy, asked for negative rates, said the dollar was too strong. Imagine my shock. Imagine your shock. You can't make this stuff up. You can't do it. No one can. It's impossible. Also on the economic front, so home prices are falling at their fastest pace on freaking record. How does all this sound to you? Sounds great. Are you really confident about the economy? Because that's what they're trying to sell you now. It don't stop. And it won't stop, people. We are in an economic free fall on a scale that is just beyond belief here. Uh, a financial system teetering teetering on the edge of the implosion, of complete, total implosion, which it's designed to do. It's been on life support. This whole thing, this market has been on life support since the last meltdown. I was the first guy to explain that. I know there's a lot of YouTubers using it, but that's it. It's been life support. It's been easy money, keeping this market pumped up here. Like I said, does it make any sense to you right now that the S&P 500 is like 24% 
off of an all-time high, which is clearly a bear market territory. In, 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 the, in a global economy, which is cratering, has no business being here, none at all. Like I said, 80, 85%, you wait. You wait till you see where this is going to go and how rapidly it's going to happen. You know, people always ask me, hey, Greg, is it going to be a slow burn? Crashes are never slow burns. Why? Because everybody runs to the door at the same freaking time. Okay, this debt market meltdown, which I told you right now, it looks like it's melting down to me, but this is in the extremely early stages. When you start seeing 20 basis points, 30 basis points, 40 basis points on a daily basis, bang, 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 bang. Forget about what that's going to do to the stock market. Forget about how fast it's going to all sell off. People's heads are going to spin around like the freaking exorcist. I'm telling you, you know, one day I'm going to have a freaking heart attack. <laughs> You're going to see me vape a lot out here. This stuff really gets to me, as you can tell. And, you know, look, uh, I'm an emotional guy. That's how I am. But this stuff is just too out there. All right, look, um, what else is there to say? Uh, gold put on a slight gain. Silver had a loss today. You had crude oil getting bid really nicely higher. Uh, Bitcoin around 19,000. Okay, all this is well and good. It's all well and freaking good. But you want to pay attention to the bigger picture, the macro the macro scene that is going on, 10-year yield knocking on 4%. Are we going to go over 4% tomorrow or the next day? I wouldn't be surprised. Is the dollar going to continue to strengthen? I wouldn't be surprised. I've been telling you this since before everybody. Okay, I don't know how long ago I started to say, watch what's going to happen to the relative strength of the dollar. Meanwhile, you know, again, look, on a relative basis, why is the dollar strong? Because it remains the prettiest bell at the ball as central banks continue to destroy their currencies to create inflation and wipe out an entire class of people. This is what's happening, but consumer confidence is high. You know it is because they're telling you. Make it up. <sighs> I'm telling you, I'm going to hyper-freaking ventilate. All right, look, I'm going to get out of here before I really do blow a gasket. Uh, epic. But the dollar, again, along with other, every single other fiat currency is bleeding to death, okay? Henceforth, why we're seeing inflation skyrocket. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It really is. All right, I'm out of here. Love you a lot. Comment. Please comment. Please share the video. Get it out there. And I will see you in the morning.